Hello, everyone. So we are doing a user onboarding teardown for Paymo. And so we're super excited to dig in, see what they can do better whenever it comes to their user onboarding experience. And so what we're going to do just starting off is take a quick peek at their homepage, see what the product is about, and then we're going to spend no time and really just dive in and see if they actually deliver on that value proposition. So right now, whenever we're looking at the homepage, what we can see here is work happy. Now, that doesn't really tell me too much. It is about work, sure, but how do I work happy? So uh, even when I read the little description text here, um, gets everyone on the same page, it's planning, scheduling, task management. I'm thinking like, is this like Trello, Asana, and everything mixed up into one tool, and it somehow makes me happy? So I'm still a little bit curious as to what this is. So I'm gonna go down a little bit more, and so they got some great social proof. Over 100,000 people are using this. Um, that's pretty great. They're using different kinds and varieties of social proof, which I like personally. There's not just the numbers, there's the quotes. Um, then they really kind of break it down a little bit further. So stop the chaos, create work harmony. And now it finally gets into, okay, what this is a little bit more. But once again, they're so focused on the, the key outcomes of what the product helps doing. I don't know what the product is. And so I know what it helps with, but now I can finally see, okay, this is, this is how it makes me work happy. So uh, it took a little while to kind of get into the product and see what it was kind of all about from this overview. But um, now that I see this, it kind of clarifies some things for me. What are your thoughts, Zar? Yeah, same here. I, I was not clear what does work happy means. One thing I saw on top that was 15 day trial. Usually there was 14 day trial. So I'm very curious why they have one more day extra. Um, I, uh, I think this, this, the, the screen currently you're at, it should be a bit above, so I, I can understand what it is. Right. And if you go up, there was a little bit of, uh, if you go up, there was, uh, um, there was this, 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 this list, right. It's a and blame daily through communication generate better plans. It seems like they're trying to play with some kind of jobs to be done framework where say, Hey, you can improve communication. You can reduce workload. Um, so I, I see that they have int integrated that in the landing page. Uh, but I think even though they tell in, the, in those sub subtext that they, what they are doing, but it, we had to go complete it down and I think they can really do better by bringing that up and reduce, bringing this part down by telling what jobs you can be. Yeah, and, like, and I think a lot of these parts, it's great that they're communicating like these, it, this is exactly what this product is gonna help me do. But by this point, I was already really curious about like, uh, so how are you actually doing that in the product? So um, I'm with you on that. I just raised this a little bit higher up so that I can understand that part. But we're not gonna waste too much more time. I'm just gonna go straight in and sign up. And so one thing I like already is this is really simple sign up process right now. It's the first little action here is simple. So this robot thing is interesting. Um, I wonder if they have spam. So my, yeah. my favorite step here is really the whole kind of please check your email thing. So I'm just going to uh, stop the share, check my email, and go through these three steps. So essentially, um, Zarp, do you want to go through why we don't really recommend this step? So the first of all, this app is actually for both uh, consumers and B2B. So that's one reason why you should not hold them. You're not just looking for B2B customers uh, to sp stop spam. So that's the big one reason. Second reason, do you always keep preaching that, you know, it might land into spam folder and 50% users do not come back. So they will have a huge drop off there. Um, so I would definitely recommend to remove that. Um, and, and third thing I want to mention that they, uh, I, I was reading a case study by Growth Design and they had a, they gave me a really specific uh, case study in that, that, that you can actually on the same page, you can ask the user to verify. It was a very interesting case right there and said, hey, you can actually verify the email and then let them go in uh, instead of them going to the email and then doing all the confirmation from there onwards. So I think this new case study that I recently learned, I will share it in the, in the YouTube channel as well, where this specific mentioned it, but I think if they implement this, then they would be able to reduce the drop off. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And so this is one of the easiest things that if you do remove this one step, uh, you're just going to see your conversion rate go up. And so um, there is just a lot of things here that even when you do remove this one step, so I'm back at the homepage here, but uh, just to give you the context, like what I had to do is I had to go to my email, see a bunch of other emails from a bunch of other people, and then I had to click it, go in, and then finally create that password. And so there's a lot of steps there that you really had to go through and is just so much distraction. So typically for most companies, they will lose anywhere from 20 to 30% of users who signed up and never went into the product in that one step. So that is just a ton of people and waste when you really think about, well, you're spending the same amount of money to get everyone to sign up and go into the product. So why waste that 20 to 30%? So right here, once we're finally into the product, they're asking me some really great questions about like, what is it that I'm hoping to do in the product? And this is really kind of tying back to the homepage, which I'm a big fan of. So we're not gonna spend too much time on here, but I like that we're talking about like, what are those sample projects? Kind of like what we saw last week in, or a couple of weeks ago in Notion and really focusing on like, what are those, kind of main items. Uh, let's do something I know, marketing. <laughs> and now it's finally asking for my names. So this is an interesting time. And now it's asking for my password again. So that's interesting. Okay. So we're done finishing the overall kind of setting up the account. And let's see what happens when we're actually in the product. Right so, yeah, they got a nice little welcome overview. This is nice. I I mean, it is an extra step, but it's one of those things that does feel more welcoming. So yeah. So just to just on that, I think they did not add the name of Wes itself, it's like him yourself, and yeah. they had a personalization in place that would have had more impact. Like you know, and then I know there's this new app right now these days that actually add image personalization. So they made a hey Wes. So again people should start utilizing such kind of apps inside their, their onboarding maybe it improves and improves the, the experience itself. Yeah, and I think it's really just that it feels a little bit more personalized and that wow experience right off the bat. And so when I'm, I'm looking here, I see there's a little hover, it's getting me to add a specific task. I'm just gonna follow along for a little bit, uh, put some dummy text here. So I've done that task. I I'm not really any closer to really understanding the product. It looks a lot like a sauna, uh, yeah. if I'm being honest. But if I'm just going through here, I see at the bottom, there's switch views, choose the best task for your work style. Um, so I'm not actually sure how to do that. So I'm gonna it's skip really that. long, we click on the click where the, yeah, okay, projects, okay. Okay, uh, whether it was that I was supposed to do or something else. Okay, so there's, I like they you can project on the best line. You see this? They're still telling you to do something. Yeah. So do projects, add project, and test. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, celebrate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I see it at the bottom now. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. okay. What so the one interesting thing here is they did a good job at the beginning of really getting me to that marketing kind of checklist and that onboarding flow. But then the actual product tour took me through adding my own project and something that maybe I'll actually get some use out of. So I think it's really interesting kind of way about going about it where it starts off with this, like maybe you'll get this template that you can use and then it goes into, let's create your own kind of project here. And so those first steps where I initially thought it was really personalized, I didn't really find too much value because I was just wanting to create my own project. So I think in terms of those initial steps, um, they might be completely unnecessary if you just get people to create their own first project. What are your thoughts? Um, so I have seen all of the project management tool for them. The, the key activation point is to add a project and then add a task. So this is their key activation point somehow. And so all of them just focus on doing those two, three tasks so that you know that this is a task management tool. Um, I think there's no harm to it. Um, I, I like the fact that there are, they, they're already giving me what project to start with and then 
go over but i think it would have been even useful just like in notions case we already so i think they already have some they have some kind of templates can you go please on the home side where you were there and you saw a couple of templates in there right so i think in terms of marketing they give you cold email content creation so it's it's also very useful already that they have these kind of uh, uh, task ready for you that you can start doing it um which is interesting it's not mm -hmm. that bad um but as i said i i want to i want to see what's next so right now after them telling that them activating me you know like just right. i know how to create a project how to create a task so what should i do next like what should be my 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 next key action and that's what i'm missing right now because i would have i would love to know to what to do next to to finish one task properly right so they yeah. just give some hints already and i think a way they could really kind of change that and leave with a trigger in place is for instance if i was going to that first project that i created and it was actually one of the requirements in the, the little product tour they're giving me is like when should this one task be due and maybe it's just auto filled for tomorrow or something like that so that the notification that they're getting is relevant and based on of what they did that day and so there's that nice extension of okay we have a task for them to check this because they need to do something tomorrow using this application so i think there's some creative ways you could use notifications in this particular case to make sure that people do come back but you're totally right there wasn't really like that ending where i feel like ah great um, now i know what to do and in terms of the word happy i i don't really quite feel it yet <laughs> there, there is uh, I mean, whenever we're coming back to that value proposition, there's a lot of things here that I'm, I'm looking at. I feel a little overwhelmed. I'm like, accounting? Yikes. I didn't know that I was part of this. Uh, time reports, I'm like, oh, okay. I, I just know projects. And so that was the only thing I focused in on. So I think there's um, definitely room for maybe that second or third onboarding experience where you can actually walk through some of these other uh, interesting parts of the tool because if it is gonna be someone who stays around and is a sticky user, you wanna make sure that they're using a lot of the product to get value out of it. So um, that's kind of my overview. I guess in terms of the overall kind of bowling alley framework that we usually talk about, I thought in terms of the straight line, uh, there was some things that I didn't find completely relevant or for instance, that's one step where they're asking me about the, do you want to have the marketing project or the consulting project and the kind of like checking off those projects it was nice i mean fairly easy for me to go through it but it didn't really provide that much value even when i opened up the tasks like social media it was just social media like if it's going to be really useful like show me something interesting at least <laughs> in some of those subtasks that is useful so that um, I mean, back at that Notion example we were talking about a couple weeks ago, uh, they actually filled out like the OKR templates. And I was just like, I'm curious about this stuff because that's a topic I really care about. So I think that whole strategy could work, um, but it could be implemented or executed on a little bit better. Um, but in terms of the, the product bumpers, I thought they did a, a fairly good job of walking me through how to set up the project. That part, it was straightforward. And it was, it was pretty brainless. I mean, the only thing that I mentioned at the end is just maybe get people to actually set a notification time so that there's a reason for them to come back that next time. And that really comes back to the conversational bumper. Like, how are we going to make sure that these people come back? Because whenever it comes to that first run onboarding experience that we're going through, most companies lose 40 to 60% of people right off the bat. And so we need to kind of have that reason for them to come back and want to come back. So let's make sure that we set a task or something that they do care about. Uh, so we have that perfect relationship for them to come back. So that's my little overview, but I'd love to hear us. Yeah. So um, I have just mentioned three things and I, and, and I, some of them are very relevant to you. I think they could really work templates really well. So that's one thing. Um, they can really use powerful templates that can actually directly go into my workflow. So I've already, since Notion signed up, I already started using Notion and I already put all my Evernote and I already started using their templates, which are very useful to me. So I think they can really work more on the template side where they can just give the frame of reference to the user and I don't have to think. So if I don't have to think, then this means that I can also use it. So that's one thing. So start using templates a lot. Um, I think... 
for such kind of complicated onboarding, I mean, as complicated software, I would say. So what Airtable does is uh, they have um, page level onboarding. So on each page, there's a question mark that says, hey, these are three things you should be doing. That's one thing. And the second thing is they give you all the help docs. They already give you videos. So I think you shouldn't let the user hanging if you don't give any templates, but at least give some kind of more helpful material. I don't see a question mark here where I can just go ahead and click on it. So I don't see that. Um, mm -hmm. So if I want to get started, I don't know how to get started because I started doing something and I like it what is there. I think the UX is amazing and I want to play around with it more, but just play around, playing around with it more doesn't, is not enough. And as I said, so three things, I would just repeat help docs, get more help docs, help documents in there where I can just click and see more up there. Where I can find out more stuff how people are doing it. Templates, detailed templates, uh, have page level onboarding. I think they did a really good job in the welcome flow in terms of like giving a little bit tour. Um, success could, success, the completion that you saw that was completely down. It could be completely, at least in the center. So you can actually realize, oh, you did something amazing. Um, notifications are also down. I think the not notifications should also come up because humans are uh, more prone to look up rather than down. And so I think if they will improve these things, it will, it will actually improve their onboarding and maybe more conversions as well. And so don't leave the user, leave the user hanging for first five, 10 minutes. Once you, what they did was a product tour, but it was not onboarding for us. Um, and I would like to get onboarded after I've done key tasks to keep telling you what to do next. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Awesome. Well, I hope you found this useful. Amo. And for those of you that are looking to really kind of learn more about user onboarding and subscribe to more of our user onboarding teardowns, make sure to check the link below to sign up for our weekly teardowns and have an amazing day. Yeah. Cheers.